Good morning beginning farmer friends. It is a little chilly out this morning. I came out earlier, plugged the tractor in, so we're gonna get this started. It's a busy week, it's a busy day. It's going to be a busy few days. We're gonna let the 4010 warm up, then we've gotta grind some pig feed. At some point today, we've gotta load some pigs, we gotta take them to the locker. There's just gonna be a lot going on today. Tomorrow, we've gotta take pigs to the locker. Stick around for all that good stuff. I've always been a rambler, my fortune's been quite hard. Always loved the weather and drank whiskey and played cards. My parents treated me kindly, they had no more but me. But I shook hands and parted at the age of 23. And there was a wealthy farmer, he lived a neighbor by. One of the questions I've got over the years a lot is how do we load pigs on pasture? And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I gotta tell you like the way we did it at first, well not on pasture, was just terrible. I remember the very first pigs we loaded, they were actually up in the garden. When my dad came up to help me, it took forever. We backed the trailer up, I built a makeshift chute, and it was all that we could do still to get the pigs into it. Now we've got a system that I like a lot, and it works for our scale. One of the big pieces is this hog cart. Let me just show you the entire process from start to finish. Had an only daughter whom I cast my high. She was most tall and handsome, gentle and so fair. I want to show you a quick overview of what a hog cart is. Now, my hog cart is 16 feet long. It's got a center divider, which on my scale and with my farm, that center divider is amazing because it allows me not only to bring pigs onto this, but sort pigs once I have them in here. The way that it works is it has these long arms right here and the wheels are on a pivot and there's a hydraulic cylinder back here that pushes and it raises and lowers. I think this model goes up to about three feet. They do make some even, they can load semis. In Iowa, these were pretty common back in the day, so I was able to get a pretty good deal on a used one. I will say from the very beginning, the most important part of loading pigs on the pasture for us is this hog cart. And the reason is that it lowers to the ground like this. A pig does not like to step up. They like to walk where their nose is down on the ground. And so in order for them to step up, they have to put their nose up into something. With this on the ground, they can kind of just walk like they normally walk straight into the hog cart. The next most important part of my hog loading process is this right here. A lot of people have seen this in previous videos, but this is not my pasture area. This small area right here is my loading corral slash feeding corral. I've got a feeder in it that needs to be taken out of commission and repaired because it is letting out way too much feed. The night before I load pigs, I come and I put this gate in right here, and that keeps the pigs out of this feeder area. In the morning, the pigs kind of, at least my pigs, kind of come up to the feeder, get a little feed, and then they go out and hang out on the pasture during the day. So I shut them out. They they still have all of that for foraging. We've got acorns and nuts and a variety of things out there for them to eat. It's not as if we're not feeding them during this time. It just works really well to have them have a reason to come up into this pen exactly at the time that I want them to. So let's let them in. Today I only need to take two pigs, so there's a bunch of pigs that, you know, they just weren't hungry, so they didn't come up. So I'm not too concerned about that. I'll just leave them out. I shut the gate so that the pigs that are in here are gonna stay in here, and I'll just let them eat for a few minutes. This is a good time for me to go do a couple other chores, things like that, let them calm down. That way, when I'm ready to load them, they're not overly squirrely or anything like that, and I bring them up this makeshift chute right here through this door and into the hog gate. It's really as simple as that. Typically, it's pretty simple. Hopefully it is today. I've got one pig loaded in there. Confession time, it took about 35 seconds and I forgot to hit record on the camera. I've got one more pig to load. There is a specific one I wanna load. There's a big white barrow out here. I'm gonna try to load that one right now. Hopefully it goes as well as that first one and I'll remember to hit record and show you what it looks like. Well, that's cool. Well, yep, keep working hard then, bud. All right, bye-bye. This is awesome. This is two minutes since I started the camera. There are three pigs that just walked onto the trailer. My son called. 
and I took the phone call figuring I'll just keep working on these pigs in a second and the pig that I wanted to go on the trailer actually loaded itself on the trailer. That might just seem like a coincidence or fate or luck or something like that but honestly I have learned that it is not those things it is because I am trying to use the right tools to do the job and the things with pigs is they are curious animals and they will want to explore things and try things out and so by building a setup that makes them want to do it themselves and think that they're doing Doing exactly what they want to do even though it's what I'm wanting them to do it changes everything I've got one red pig in there that I loaded already this white barrow is the one that I want to take with me which means that I got to get this Hereford cross out of here so what I'll do is I'll slide that gate shut I'll hop in here back down here in this chute I've got that gate shut so I don't have more pigs coming in this is the good thing about having multiple gates is that I'm able to do things in steps especially when I'm out here by myself I can hop in and out close gates move pigs it really works to do it by myself with this process. <laughs> That's why I have multiple gates. The red pig and the white pig all tried to come out at the same time, but it's not a big deal because I had this gate shut right here. Now I've got the white pig, that red pig back there. Latch my door, let this one back in, open up the corral, and we'll be ready to load pigs again tomorrow. There are a lot of systems on the farm that I feel like I have zero handle on, but this one right here is one that I feel pretty good about, loading pigs. The only thing that I really want to change about this system is I want to take this loading area here that we have around the feeder and I want to make it completely portable. I would like to have just a series of six to eight gates that I could easily come in and set up that would have a chute system like that and I could just bring in my loading farrowing crate right there and just have it mobile. That would be the best way to do it. Now we got to go load these pigs onto the stock trailer. The other huge benefit of the hog cart is that you can back it up to the trailer and make it even with the trailer. I will say though, if you didn't have a hog cart, if you were still just raising a smaller number of pigs and you couldn't justify the use or the expense of a hog cart, although I would say, I don't know, for the price that I paid for this one, which I think was $500, if I had 25 pigs, maybe even less, I would have this hog cart. What I'm trying to say is you could back up the trailer and do the whole system the same way I did, especially if you had a farrowing crate type of chute that you could shut the back then if the pig takes its time to step up into the trailer, it's not a big deal. You'll still let the pig do its own thing. One pig, two pigs. I said earlier that pigs are curious. We'll just see how curious they are. came back out here late this afternoon because we're gonna do it all again tomorrow. We're gonna take eight pigs to the locker tomorrow. So I'm gonna go shut that gate up there and then tomorrow when I wanna load, they'll come up. We'll load them up, same process, just eight pigs instead of two pigs. If you are a builder designer guy or gal, I would love to have some tips or thoughts on that. Or if you want to design and build one with me, even better. Come up to Iowa. Let's put together the ultimate pastured pig loading system. This is the Milo Locker. Not one that I've gone to on video yet, but one that is close by and that we did a lot of work with until this year, actually. With everything that happened this year, the lockers filled up so fast. We didn't have any dates scheduled at this locker, but luckily they got us squeezed in. This is an important locker visit for us because because this is gonna give us meat for our farmer's market on Saturday, which is the last one of a year Thanksgiving market. We're gonna get some loin roast, shoulder roast, all sorts of good stuff that's kind of perfect for these holiday meals. Here we are at the Milo Locker in Milo, Iowa. One thing I just noticed, and I've got to give a big shout out to the Milo Locker for this, but they've got water nipples in all the pins here. They've got a high one up here for cattle and a low one down here for pigs. I absolutely love that because I like to bring my animals in the night before. Not only does it help me by not having to get up so early and deliver them early in the morning, but also it gives them a chance to calm down, stop that adrenaline from flowing. Those water nipples, that's a pretty awesome thing. There you go. There's our loading process from beginning to end. I do hope that I kind of explained and showed you what our loading process looks like and our unloading process. I think the biggest thing that I want you to take away from today is it is all about having the right setup. Loading those pigs was easy today because we had everything set up to make it easy. Unloading the pigs here today, it went well because they had everything set up to make unloading go well. That's the biggest deal. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a little instructional video today. 
how we load our pigs. Also wanted to give a big shout out to our buddies, Milo Locker Meats. They've got not only the processing, but they also got a little grocery store in here, which is a cool thing for the little town of Milo. They've got meat in there, different cuts, beef, pork, all that good stuff. So again, thank you all for watching, like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. We'll see you next time.